In many cases, when you want to look through data, like here in this table, and perform some actions, you will use VBA. Now, in previous lessons, for which I'm going to put a link in the description, we have looked at loops to go through this data set and then find the matches. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the find functionality of Excel to do the same, and that could sometimes be faster than to go through each row, especially if you have a lot of data. What do I mean by the find functionality? If you do Ctrl F on your keyboard, you get this box, and here you can search, for example, for A1. If you do find next, you find it here, and then you find it here. Before I go into the code, let's look a little bit at theory. So the find function in VBA has many arguments. Only the first one is required, but I advise you to give values for the ones highlighted in gray. And I'm gonna explain why in a bit. Let me first explain to you what those arguments are. So the what is basically what you're looking for, which is simple. After, it's the cell after which the search will start. To explain it to you, let's look at this example. So here I'm gonna select A1, and then I'm gonna do Control F and bring the find window. I have A001, and if I click on Find Next, the first match is at cell E1, Find Next, next match is A2, and then A6. Now look at the difference if I start here now. So if I click, first one is A6, then it goes all the way back up, E1, and then A2. So based on this argument, the cell that you're going to start from, the order of the matches will be different. So this is not a very important parameter. I usually leave it blank. Look in is important. Basically, look in means where do you want to look? Do you want to look only in the values of the cell or do you want to include also the formulas? Do you want to look in the comments or maybe in the threaded comments? And this is important to set because if you don't set it, what it will do, it will just look at what you had before. So for example, here I have values and then it will use this as a default and search for values. So for example, let's assume that I went through comments and then I looked for some data manually and then I just closed it and I went away. Once I'm using my Excel and I'm using my code, it will look only in comments. So it's better to set it so you avoid any problem. Next, we have look at. Again, I would set this for the same reason. So here, either you look at the whole cell content to match what you have or partially. Then you have search order, which is do you want to search by rows or by columns? Next, you have search direction. Do you want to go to the next one or the previous occurrence? Then you have match case, which I also like to set. So if you say true, it means it has to have the same case. If you say false, it means case doesn't matter for you. And then you have a couple of things that I never use, which is match byte and search format. So let's try two examples. The first one is to look for one match. The second one is to look for multiple matches. So now let's bring VBA. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Alt F11 and you get the VBA screen. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And here I have created a module. To create a module, you just right click here, do insert and then module. Let's start with the simple case, which is one match. So we're gonna do sub match underscore one, enter, you get the two parentheses, and let's create a variable called lock. So dim lock as range. So this is a range variable because we search I'm looking for a cell that contains a certain value. Then we're going to try to set this lock. Remember when you have variables like ranges, you need to use the set keyword. So set lock equal. We have to start with a sheet. Here my data is in sheet one. So I'm going to do sheet one dot range. I want to look in column A only, right? That's how you write it. Then you have dot cells dot find. 
here you open the parentheses and you get the arguments that I showed you earlier on in this lesson. So what are we looking for? Basically, we are looking for cell E1, right? So I'm just going to make another dim as a string and I'm going to say S is equal sheet one dot range E1 just to make it simpler to read. So here I'm looking for my S comma after as we said it's not very useful for me so I'm just going to keep it blank and put another comma then you have look in look in is important so here if you remember we had either the formulas the values the comments etc I'm just going to put XL values because I just want to look in the values then look at it was about partial match or full match whole match so I'm just going to put XL part for partial then search order is not important for me then you have direction not important for me so I put a comma and then you have match case I want to match the case so I'm going to say true and then I'm going to close the parentheses because I don't care about the other two optional arguments so here we have tried to find a cell where we have a match so next what we need to do is to see whether we got a match or not if lock is nothing then and we do end if so that means if we didn't find anything so that is nothing there is no match we're gonna do message box and don't forget to ident you need to use the tab and we're gonna say no match in case I get something I can do else here and I can do message box let's return the value that we have in column B so here I have my cell lock you have to think about it as a cell like for example range a1 for example or range a4 so if you assume it like this you can use all the properties of the ranges for example if we do offset you can offset by rows and columns if i want the value next to it it's the same row right so i put zero for rows but i need to move one column to the right so i put one and i'm gonna say dot value and that's it so let's create a button and let's run it so we do insert illustration and then we put icon let's write search for example we have this we can put this here right click assign macro and then we have match one now here I selected a1 let's select something else as a test b1 so I should get watch as you can see I get watch if I select A1, you can see that I have two matches here, car and TV. What will happen? I'm just going to get the first one. It's like the VLOOKUP because my code is set up to find one match. Let's do another code where we're going to find all the matches. So here we have another sub match, multiple. We're going to copy those things because we need our lock, we need our string s to get the value we're searching for what we're gonna add here is dim r as long so why are we having r as long? so my strategy is to use this find logic but what I'm gonna do is every time I find a match I'm gonna record the row of this match so for example for a0001 the first one is at row 2, right? Then I'm going to say, find me the next match. The next match is at row 6. If 6 is bigger than 2, then it's a new match. Then after row 6, I'm going to say, please find me a new match. What will the find function do? It will go back to row 2. If it goes back to row 2, it means I already got the value, right? It's not a new match. So then I'm going to stop the code. So let me show you in practice what it means. So here, instead of doing this, we need to do a with block. With sheet one dot range a a, okay, and with is at the end. So here, I'm just trying to take this piece of the lock formula and put it on top. So and here, I'm gonna have my code, my loop, everything. So next we're gonna set lock. So let's do set 
lock is equal to I already have sheet one dot range AA right so I can continue dot and I can copy from here it's the same so here I just copied the rest so it's the same as saying set lock equal sheet one dot range AA dot cell etc so now I'm getting my lock here I need the same logic because what if there is zero match if there is zero match I want from the beginning to tell the user there is no match but if there is at least one match here I need to change right what I can do is a loop so do until lock dot row smaller or equal to r and then we do loop here so this is another way to do loops here I have r as long we're gonna set r as zero we don't need to but it's just as a precaution let's take an example to understand this loop basically r starts at zero right my first match for a001 is at row 2 so 2 is bigger than 0 right which means that I need to continue looping as soon as I reach 6 and I want to go back and I find row 2 I need to stop the loop and this is what we are doing in this code so here what I want to do inside is 1 is to say message box the same thing we're gonna copy this Put it here so first I'm getting the value second of all I want to fill R with lock dot row so for example here I started I was at zero I got the second row I need to put the row two here so when I go to row six I'm checking versus row two and so on and then I need to find my next instance so I'm going to show you something if you go here up if you do dot you will see something called find next right so if I do lock is equal to dot find next the same way I cut it here I can cut it there and then if I open the parenthesis I have one argument do you remember what was the after after basically is I have to put the cell from which I want to continue searching this was not an important argument for the normal find but when I have my find next I want to make sure that I'm starting let's say I was at row 2 I want to continue going down to find my next cell right so this is why it's very important and what is my reference cell now it is lock and don't forget here with lock you need to write set before then let's insert illustration icon same thing we're just gonna use this one now we'll bring it here right click assign macro match multiple and let's try it car tv so it works good now i'm gonna put a breakpoint and show you how it works so if i do f5 and then i start doing f8 we start R is equal to 0 and S is A001 right here I'm starting with my range and then if I do F8 I need to set my lock cell what is my lock cell it's here it's 001 this is the value of it if you want to see what's in it you can do view immediate window let's make this smaller and do question mark lock dot address enter this is cell a2 so it found me my first match at cell a2 is lock nothing no so if i do f8 lock is not nothing it will go into my else case let's start lock dot row is what two right second row what is r zero two is not smaller than zero right so it needs to loop again so if I continue I get my message box as you can see the car and then I'm setting my row so we do f8 now my row is 2 because lock dot row which is a2 now the row of it is 2 so I set 2 and then I need to find my next 
match. So here I have dot find next and I'm starting at A2. What is my next cell with A0001 starting from A2? It's basically A6. So let's see. If you see here, we're going to try it again. Enter. It is A6. So now it's going to loop. We go back here. 6 is not smaller than 2. So it has to loop again. So here we get the TV. Then we store 6 in R, which is here. And then we need to find my next match. Where is my next match? Let's find out. Let's remove this. And let's try it. You can see that it's back to A2. So my next match from here is actually A2. I will continue. I will loop. Now here, this is 2, right? Because now we are at A2. But R is now 6 because my last match was row 6. If I do F8, it will exit the loop and it's done. So please let me know in the comments the different scenarios you are encountering and whether you prefer to use the traditional looping or this way to find the matches.